The photoelectric effect was first described a little bit before the 1900s, and Albert Einstein explained it in 1905 and received the Nobel Prize in Physics for his explanation in the early 20s, maybe 1921. And it was this idea that if we had a light, here you see a light shining on a piece of metal, and if we change the wavelength of that light to make that light carry more energy, here I'm lowering the wavelength, and you see that electrons are being ejected from the surface of that sodium metal with this bluish green light. And so that is the photoelectric effect. That is where the first, uh, the, the minimum amount of energy required to start ejecting electrons, and we can find the ionization energy uh, with that process. Now, we're going to move on from that to photoelectron spectroscopy. Where photoelectron spectroscopy, we find a way to measure how much energy, um, by putting in a, a spectra of energy wavelengths, we determine when electrons are ejected until we get rid of all the electrons in the atom. Now, if we start with hydrogen, that's what we're looking at here for hydrogen. Here we see along the bottom of the graph, along the x-axis, energy, sometimes called the binding energy, and on the y-axis, the number of electrons that are ejected. And here we see with hydrogen, we have one electron ejected. And so that's our 1s electron. If we move to helium, you will see, well, we would predict from Coulomb's law that because of the larger charge differential, more charge in the nucleus, that the um, ionization energy would be a little bit higher. And in fact, it is, if we click on helium, here we see a peak that's twice as large, indicating we have twice as many electrons, and a larger binding energy for those electrons. If we move on to lithium, we would expect to be able to identify three electrons, and here we have them. Now, the thing you have to keep straight here is this one electron that has the lowest binding energy is actually the electron that's farthest from the nucleus. So this is the uh, 2s1 electron of lithium, and these are the 1s electrons of lithium that have the higher binding energy. Let's go on to uh, beryllium and take a look to see. Here we have four electrons of beryllium, and you'll notice that on this bottom axis, we're going up to a binding energy of 10. We don't know exactly what those units are here, but uh, up on the next line, they go from 10 to 100, so I'll, uh, approximately 10 times as much energy. Now the electrons with the lowest amount of binding energy, the ones that are bound the most lightly, removed the most easily, those would be the outer electrons and those would be the two electrons that are in the 2s level. And the electrons up here in the graph are the electrons closest to the nucleus, and so they are bound much more tightly and have a much higher binding energy. And so this evidence supports the quantum mechanical model of the atom uh, to show its energy levels and all of that kind of stuff. We're going to jump up to nitrogen. Um, uh, we're just going to go to boron. You see the five electrons. These would be the uh, in the 2p sublevel, these would be in the 2s sublevel, and these would be in the 2p um, sublevel. And if we jump ahead clear to something like magnesium, we should be able to count 12 electrons. And here they are going from the, the most tightly bound electrons. This would be the 1s electrons, and then we're skipping down here to the 2s electrons and the 2p electrons, the six electrons in the 2p sublevel, and then, oops, 
Did I do all that backwards? Let's see, I lost myself. Yes, anyhow, the, the most lightly bound electrons here are with magnesium. These would be the 3s electrons. So 3s, 2p, 2s, and 1s, in case I got that uh, mixed up earlier. That's the way these would be. So if you move on to something like chlorine, we should be able to identify 17 electrons. And the lower the binding energy means those are the electrons in the outer shell. So these are the uh, p electrons in the third energy level. And these are the s electrons in the third energy level, most easily removed. And then these are the p electrons in the second energy level, p electrons, excuse me, s electrons in the second energy level, and the s electrons in the first energy level would be most tightly bound. Only one other quick note about this that I want to leave you with before I finish this video, and that is um, this picture of a photoelectron spectroscopy spectrum, and you'll see that, see that you have to look carefully, and you'll see that in a lot of cases they reverse this order on the x-axis. Here we have a high energy going to a low energy. And so for this particular spectrum, we see the lowest energy clear to the right because uh, we've kind of reversed that spectrum on the bottom. And so you have the higher energy levels most easily removed, the lowest binding level, uh, looking like it's farther to the right because we've reversed that um, scale on the x-axis.